Welcome back, movie fans. This is the podcast, Sequel Suck, and we've decided to get the band back together because we are going to talk about the biggest franchise in probably horror, I would say, or the most, the most recently popular franchise that we all love very dearly, uh, Scream. And the fact that this number seven looks like it's about to fall off the end of the cliff. And or we, is it all going to plan, Cable? Is it all going perfectly no. to plan? No, I don't. I don't. I don't think so. I don't think so. Randy's that's return. Just, yeah. Randy's the mastermind. <laughs> that, well, yeah, that's. Um, but Michelle, welcome back. Thanks. Hello. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know if we need this, but there might be a few people who are listening to this episode have mm. no idea what we're talking about. But as a quick recap, uh, in recent weeks, uh, Scream 7 has uh, collapsed in upon itself somewhat mm. as Melissa Barrera, who played Sam Carpenter in 5 and 6, got the ass uh, quite quickly and swiftly based on some Instagram posts. Um, I, I, I don't know if we need to, like, burrow down into the post. Basically, no, she posted I don't, I, I, don't think, about, I don't think so. She no. posted about the Israel-Palestine conflict and uh, the studio decided that her post was anti-Semitic and fired her. The next day, Jenna Ortega, uh, for all intents and purposes, quit. Now, that's that's basically where it's at at this stage. Mm. And since then, the director, who is not Radio Science, the new director has come on board, has come out and gone, it's not up to me. Basically <laughs> saying, um, I don't like this, which mm. is usually like the first part of a three-part conversation where a director exits a project mm. so i don't know what's going on meanwhile uh jasmine Savoy brown and mason gooding are dead quiet <laughs> just like sitting there be like please don't fire us too <laughs> this could be our chance so it's all up in the air uh so how are we how are we feeling team about scream seven at the moment <laughs> well i mean i guess i mean you've recapped it pretty pretty well uh i guess it's also the sequence of events and subsequent information that's come out now the ma- mail i heard well before melissa barrera was uh fired uh was that jenna ortega was probably going to struggle to be involved at all because obviously her star is on the rise and also she costs more money but also wednesday is filmed in europe and that is front and center of mine season two for netflix so her being involved a lot in a, the next screen movie again if they were going to film when they wanted to her uh, her available availability was minimal at best hopefully maybe for a cameo to explain why she's not there or maybe she could have been killed in the first scene i don't know but i know they were already working around that um and then obviously the melissa thing just was the bombshell that came out of nowhere and again that's another after a few days and people sorting through the the shit and the people that are in the know uh supposedly when we found out melissa was fired was actually not when she was fired she she had actually been fired for a couple of weeks before that so and then obviously the jenna stuff on top so if jenna was pretty tight with melissa and was already a little bit disillusioned with would she break her neck to come back to america or canada to film scream seven if she didn't like the way melissa was treated then she's probably like well fuck that i'm not coming back so um and i think reading between the lines on a few other posts uh and again very legitimate um sources i think jenna had every reason to ask for more money and i don't think she was going to get it either so i mean no nev campbell didn't get it for number six either so well that is that is something that uh came out sort of after the fact. Yeah. I mean, she said, I, I have lots of ideas. I mean, she said, what do you, mm. what's your vibe on it, Michelle? What do you well, think? I heard the Jenna Ortega thing had happened weeks ago too. Like that mm. wasn't new news as well. Like she was already out and they're just sort of claiming, oh, she's <coughs> left because of Melissa Barrera. I might not have anything to do with it at all. Yeah. Yeah. And then, so the, the thing that came out after, so the initial report that came out was that Melissa, uh, the general take was exiting because she uh, had scheduling conflicts with Wednesday season two. Yeah. Then like a week later, it was like, oh no, they didn't give me enough money. I wanted more money. And so I'm out, which I think is pretty smart, even if it's not true on Jenna Beha- General Ortega's behalf, because when the, f- I mean, the fans are the ones who are going to come at you. The studio is, they're obviously love 
uh, Jenna Ortega. She's a big star. Melissa Barrera, obviously the studio is already angry at her, so she doesn't have anything to, to gain or lose. But Jenna Ortega has a lot to lose in terms of like public support for exiting a franchise after Melissa Barrera got canned because mm. the fans don't care about the ins and outs. What they care about is whether or not the person they know who plays the character that they know is in the movie or not. And that's why people get weird about recastings and things and, and deaths mm. off screen. I think it's pretty smart for her to, to come out and say, actually, they wouldn't give me enough money because when Nev Campbell came out and said they didn't give me enough money, all the fans are like, fuck the studio, we're with Nev. Mm. So it kind of puts General Ortega in the Nev Campbell camp by proxy and people who definitely would have been pissed off when she was like, oh, I can't, mm. I'm doing Wednesday too. Scream fans are quite rabid at times and would have, uh, I'm sure been at her being like, fuck it, do both or quit Wednesday. Fuck, we hate you. It's like, they wouldn't pay me. They're like, you're just like Nev. Fuck the studio. Stop fucking around the people we love. Mm. So I think it's pretty clever um, mm. that that was the, the report that came out after the fact. I, I'm interested in what you guys think. How much of the Melissa Barrera firing and the, the General Ortega exiting do you guys think is, is pretty down the line or do you think is bunk? Do you think we're getting any spin? on what the reports are at this stage, or do you think we're getting told pretty you much the whole You can go first, Michelle. I don't sorry. think so. I think it sounds like the truth. You remember last time we were like, oh, this Nev Campbell thing's just like a ploy for, you know, publicity and stuff, but it didn't turn out to be. So I think this is the same thing. I mean, I don't know, man. Maybe there's some deleted scenes. I'm still holding <laughs> yeah. out hope. <laughs> yeah, oh, look, I mean, look, we can analyse it for, I'm sure, hours because I think there's different ways to look at why. <laughs> The thing is, I don't kind of get, I kind of understand Jenna's not available. So they write a different script where it's heavily focused on Melissa's character, Sam Carpenter, which makes perfect sense. She's still got the connection to Billy. They can bring the mummy and Christina. They can have a thing like Jenna's still important. I get it. And she's on the rise and that sells more tickets. But is she super important to another movie or, or the trilogy? Not exactly. Like it, it can it can be worked around. So I do wonder though, having said that, like I do wonder once I knew Jenna was out, they've come up with a really lame ass excuse to fire Melissa to almost start afresh because they're like, Well, if we can't have both sisters, it's not gonna work. I, I don't know. It, it just but it just does feel weird to set up a, up a next trilogy moving forward with you have your legacy characters, you kill off Dewey, you've almost effectively killed off Gail and Nev doesn't come back. So you're basing it around the core four now and then two of them are not there. And you kind of go, well, what was it all for then? What was the purpose? Like, And that's that's the pretty big thing is that they spent yeah. a lot of time in Scream 6 setting up the core mm. four as yeah. like a catch cry. <laughs> like it's not, they never called them like, I don't know, the, the trippy trilogy in, in between Dewey and like they didn't have a, a, a pet name for the three mm. surviving members of the original films. But they sure as hell made sure that we all could like hashtag core four, and mm. now they're not. Um, I I want like I haven't really dug too deep into where the rest of the production is at. Have you guys seen any any other information about anything else to do with the film at this point? All the media seems to be mm. around these two. Is there anything that because you guys are a bit more savvy with the internet than I am? I sort of just read the headlines and go ah, and then I move on. Have you come across anything about the writing, the directing? Oh, the look, I mean. I feel like some of the sources I've looked at that n seem to know a lot of stuff and, and seem to be right previously or seem to know enough about it that they can get a good inkling of what's happening. So, and I'm sure, uh, sorry, Michelle, I almost called Michelle Melissa then. I'm sure Michelle can back this up because Michelle's watched some videos as well. But I think what we've sort of heard in the last few weeks that was they were working on a script. So it's the script writers from the first, um, so James Vanderbilt and Guy Busick um, that have done Scream 5 and 6, they're continuing on. And they were working scripts where there was one that had generated a lot more because if she was available and came back, and then one that was a little bit more cameo-esque if she wasn't available. Um, and it's still centered around the core four, or at least the core four being available. Um, and possibly Gail, and then there was going to be a push for trying to get Patrick Dempsey back and Nev, and then have a sort of two stories running simultaneously, and then it all sort of comes together in the the, the third act. So you'd have sort of the Nev, well Sydney and Mark stuff, and possibly the daughters, and then we'd have another side story with uh, Melissa Barrera's character or the Carpenter sisters, and or and all coming together at the end. Um, obviously, that's 
going to change. So, yeah, I'm, I'm assuming Spyglass and Paramount are really pushing to go, geez, now we're going to probably have to open up the purse strings and make sure Nev and Patrick Dempsey come in to sort of finish off this story, which is already kind of, I don't know, it seems all a bit weird now because you've got you've started a trilogy and you're exiting two characters that are pretty important important to that storyline and then you're going to go, okay, now we've just got to hitch our wagon back to Sydney Prescott and somehow make that seem logical. Um, yeah. yeah I mean, look, I think that the simplest solution, you know, is the best is just you, know, you open the film with Mindy on the phone talking to Sam and Tara. I'm like, Hey, I'll be at your house in a minute. And she rounds the corner and looks up at their apartment and their apartment explodes. <laughs> and, yeah, uh, and then she's like, Oh my God. And then you see a ghost face, like with a petrol can just running down the road, looking over the shoulder, like fuck, 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 fuck. <laughs> and then she's like, Oh my God. And then she calls Gail. And she's like, Gail, Sam and Tara are dead. And she's like, I know who can help. And then Patrick Dempsey and everyone's his hand. And, uh, just like that pre-credits you deal with the problem and you move on i mean that's that's just an easy solution that i'm willing to throw to spyglass for free um you know if they need help <laughs> but I, I think that opens up the other the bigger picture is that i i understand you can't just willy-nilly throw money at actors all the time and pay overs to have them and you would argue and i had this argument with someone the other day that was like oh you know horror movies they keep churning them out blah 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 and it's like well compared to making a Star Wars film or a Marvel film, horror films generally, um, to make them is a lot cheaper. They spend sometimes $10, $15 million, maybe 25, maybe even a little bit more, but they can make so much more profit compared to spending $200 million and having either a dud movie or make a billion dollars. You still, long run, you, you're going to make more money out of a horror oh, film. So you don't yes. pay, you don't pay overs for your actors, but in this sort of scenario, I think you need to make sure you're paying them accordingly, uh, especially if you want, like, say, Gail and um, um, Sydney back. We haven't even mentioned Kirby yet either. Um, but, yeah, it's just, I don't know, like, it's, I've kind of lost my train of thought a little bit, but um, it's just one of those things. It's like, I don't, I don't know what they want to do here. And this is where I'm going to be a bit controversial because I've always liked, I feel like Scream has never been really, even though we can sort of argue some plot points are a little bit silly and maybe a little bit ridiculous when you really peel back the layers of the onion. Overall, the series is pretty, pretty decently okay. It doesn't, it's not ridiculous like a Jason where he gets electrocuted back to life or um, how Michael Myers gets decapitated and then somehow in the next movie no that was a different guy that got decapitated so this is a new guy we don't have it too ridiculous but i kind of feel like why don't we just fucking reboot or re reset and just go you know what that was all a dream the carpenters didn't exist do we still alive i just i don't know i just like go back to gail well that Sydney is already something that is and, being floated yeah yeah have you read about this michelle yeah i've heard i watched i don't know if you guys subscribe to the youtube channel nerd box no i do not no Oh, they did like a five ideas, you know, to continue the Scream 7 series. And it was interesting. And a few of them were like, make it a prequel or, you know, make it a continuation from either Scream 3 or from Scream 4 and just wipe out 5 and 6. But I don't think you can for people like us that have, I don't know. No, been... you can. You can. I think I think we're big enough to. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I know it, it, it's going to be, it would be weird, but I kind of feel like I've lived through enough crap movies of other franchises, I I like that Scream hasn't had to do hard reboots or retconning, but I kind of feel like they paint themselves into the corner by having this storyline. Now they're sacking. What, what are they going to do? Recast Sam Carpenter? Like, I, well, can you not just kill them off like off screen? And now the next thing is like their mother yeah. come back, and maybe she's Ghostface because you know Sydney like drags them into this, and then you bring back Stu. If we're going to make it stupid. Yeah, also, no, but see, like, that's what I don't want to do. I... That they've they pen themselves in the corner, but they do have the benefit of the fact that despite how they played the last two movies, they still have Sydney Prescott and Gail Weathers alive and, and now Kirby. Kirby back in the game. And as you said, they've got Kincaid who's still alive. Like we have four major characters from across mm. the series who are alive and who are still in play. You know, it's it's pretty much written as a guarantee now that the mark that's talked about in Scream Five is. Oh no, yeah, it is. Kincaid. It is. Like yeah. it, it's they they've just flat out said, "Yep, she's married to Kincaid." So he's still in the world of Sydney Prescott. Gail was Arthur just meets. in six. Kirby was in six. Sorry, 
Martha Meeks was in Spring Martha Spring. Meeks She's still, is alive. still alive. You're right, and you know, and Chad mm. and Mindy are still alive and still in the game. But you you could because they've shifted the story to New York. I don't think it's that difficult to for the next film to have nothing to do with Sam and Tara without a hard reboot because you just don't go the fuck back to New York. Because one of the things that is you mm. see, I, I agree. I, I think Scream has avoided being a ridiculous franchise for the most part. There are moments mm. where you're like, what? Yeah. But they are played for fun. But one of the things that they excuse me. One of the things that Scream uh has done is kind of just relentlessly traumatize one or two survivors again mm. and again and again. And you know, there is kind of that thing is like, why does Sydney keep getting in this situation? Like it becomes a bit John McClaney. Like, what yeah. the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> and it's kind of it's it's the opposite of ridiculous. It's quite logical to be like, hey Sam and Tara just check the fuck out. Like they changed their identity. They vanished. And Chad and Mindy can do the explaining. Like they can come into the movie at some point and be like, we have no idea where Sam and Tara are. After the second time they got attacked by that fucking insane family, um, they vanished. No one no one can find them. They changed their names. They <laughs> left the country. They're ghosts, man. We we're not going to see them. Ghost Which ghost. a yeah. Yeah, A yeah. explains it away without anything crazy because the audience is like, yeah, of course, I'd fucking run and hide too. And B, it leaves the door open for General Ortega to come back and potentially Melissa Barrera because people forgive and forget all the time mm. in movies. And, you know, people like, oh, like Jamie Lee Curtis has said three times, I'll never be in another Halloween movie. Mm. Keeps coming to Halloween. It's like, yeah. it's not impossible to think that Scream 8 mm. could be the return of Sam and Tara if they don't blow up the apartment building in the opening yeah. credits. So I think, oh, look, I think you're kind of in a sweet spot to like, yeah. if they can get, I mean, we know Courtney Cox will come back. Courtney Cox, well, especially well, now yeah. that everyone else is gone, maybe Scream 7 is the Gail Weathers scream and she's finally the lead. Mm. I'm sure she wouldn't be angry about that. Well, that was before, again, before the Melissa stuff too, I'd already heard whispers that she might not be back. Um, and that's another thing where they probably like, we either could have killed her in the last one or we'll at least keep the door ajar by having that off screen sort of like, oh, we've got a pulse. So we can use her or bring her back, but I don't know if she's a guarantee to come back. You know what would be a fucking great movie um, is you have a Gail and Kirby buddy cop style screen. Yeah. <laughs> like the odd couple. You've got the actual cop mm -hmm. and you've got the reporter and they put their heads together and they get shit done. I'd watch yeah. seven of those fucking movies. Got, I, I think, posted. you know, talking about Gail too, like I really think if they bring back Gail again, They've got to have a better story for it because the more I look back at six, her bullshit. Yeah, it was <laughs> it was like she had one of the best sequences, the chase sequence and the phone call in her apartment. But overall, her storyline was absolute rubbish, and it actually didn't do her any justice. So, no. um, they really didn't handle that character very well at all. Um, and the point I was actually trying to get to before I lost before got lost before was. This is a problem too. It's like maybe like, and I know this has been a push online. The people that are angry that Melissa's um, being fired is like Spyglass sell the franchise to somebody that will actually do it justice and spend the money. So apparently, the one of the heads at Spyglass, who obviously is the guy that controls the money, uh, I think his name's Gary Barber. Um, apparently, he's um, quite tight with the 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 money that's given out, and hence that's where Nev didn't get her money last time. And the same thing was sort of happening with Melissa and Jenna. And I guess that was the other thing. I, I do wonder if they've come up with the lame excuse um, for Melissa's firing also because they knew they were going to have to pay her too because I believe both were signed to two movie deals. So all of a sudden, cha-ching, cha-ching, third movie, they can ask for more cash because they had more leverage. And this guy's probably like, yeah, we can do without it. Um, yeah, well, I so, did wonder how Jenna could could walk from a film that was in pre production. I would have presumed that contracts would have been signed, but maybe not. Maybe I think just... again, you know, you hear different stories. I believe similar to Nev. Nev was actually signed when she did Scream. She was actually one of the only ones that was signed to two two movie deal. So Miramax uh, got her and Dimension Film got her fairly. I would have said cheap for Scream Two. Whereas obviously everyone everyone else sort of had to be bought back and obviously got their payday and that's where she made money on screen three. But um, I think uh, Mindy and Chad are already had already been signed for a third film, so that's the other thing. It's like, well, do they come back and maybe they're getting their payday? But um, yeah, Melissa and Jenna not being 
contracted as far as we believe um, would have cost them a little bit more money. So, again, this is probably all a lame excuse for them not to pay them, pretty much. Yeah, and that's, I think that's the thing that's so frustrating as fans when we're watching these films that we love and these characters that we start to, you know, connect with. Like I said, you know, when we were doing mm. the, the episodes, like Scream 5, I was like, what are we doing? By the end of Scream 6, I was like, okay, cool. Particularly like Chad, like mm. I'm on board Chad. I want I want him back in Scream 7, regardless mm. how they do it. And Tara, I liked all along and I, I like mm. Tara. Um, but it, it is money. Like it's, it's not the actor's fault. Even, you know, if they do walk away a lot of the time, it is, it's, it's, it is money. And there's, there's a larger, I think a point, a larger idea that, that I'll get to, but it, it'll be a bit ranty. I'm more curious at this point. What, what do we think is the most likely outcome? Like Michelle, what do you think is most likely to happen in terms of story? Are we going to get Chad and Mindy as the leads? Are we going to, are they going to drag Nev back kicking screaming? Are we going to jettison everything and get brand new characters in a brand new direction? What do you think is most likely at this point? But is we're there still a aiming for 2025 release, by the way. That's the still the plan. Is there a possibility that Scream 7 just won't happen at all? No. No, I think it's a borderline impossibility because I think the franchise is bigger than the, the actors, which is why they weren't fussed when they didn't get Nev Campbell for 6, and 6 wound up meeting a butt-ton of cash. That's true. Uh, I think you love a butt-ton of cash, but anyway, continue. Uh, <laughs> a, a, yeah. A, yeah. A, a lot of, I think a lot of actors, particularly a lot of mm. young um, you know, quote unquote, uh, trendy, you know, fashionable actors who are in the current zeitgeist as being up and comers and popular and have mm. a, a following, particularly in the younger demographic, which is what horror movies always want to hit. They always want to try and get that like teen to early 20 market, uh, because they have disposable income and will come and watch the movie five times and then buy the Blu ray and then tell their friends mm. and TikTok about it and all those things that studios want. Mm. I think that the, the name Scream is more valuable than any individual actor. Yeah. So I think it is. I, I think it is almost impossible that Spyglass sell to another studio because they know they don't need General Ortega and Melissa Barrera to make money. Yeah. And I think it is all but impossible that we won't get Scream 7. I think it might be delayed, but we are getting Scream 7. There's yeah. no doubt about it. I, I don't doubt that. I just, mm. it's, um, yeah, it's, look, it's, it's just one of those things, I think. I don't know. I feel like with six, they put all their eggs too much in a basket and they went all out. And then now if they get rid of Jenna, well, they've got rid of Jenna and uh, Melissa. Sorry, Jenna's walked and got rid of M Melissa. But I don't know. I, I, I don't know if Mindy and Chad are the answer either is as standalone. I think that's a bit weak. I don't know if like, and they're both people that should never have survived, even though I like Chad as well. I no way they both I mean, should have survived. Yeah. And I kind of feel about, like it's not ridiculous. Chad making it through Scream Six is ridiculous. And yeah. I kind of I kind of think oh well, it's just personal opinion. I don't mind Jasmine Savoy Brown as an actress, but I just I kind of didn't like her in Six too much and I was kinda of like, I hope she dies. And yeah, she annoyed me like definitely annoyed me, but that's I think kind it was of like, good balance. Yeah, and I was kinda of like, oh, I don't know. I yeah. It's I don't, I don't think they can carry a movie on their own. Like, no, yeah, I agree with you. Nev yeah. Campbell or like Gail Weathers would have to come back. Like something, there'd have to be some kind of tie to like the legacy characters. Mm. It can't just be Chad and Mindy roaming around wherever they live now. Well, what about this? What about we've got an FBI agent in the mix now in Kirby, mm. uh, which which is I ridiculous think too. But anyway. I, I think yeah, I was going to say I think that's on the precipice of being ridiculous, but I'll go with it. Um, why they didn't just make her a cop bewilders me, but whatever. She's FBI, I guess, because then she can go interstate with jurisdiction. Yeah. But what I mean, we've got an FBI agent. What if the movie starts with her like grabbing Chad and and Mindy and like throwing him in a car and driving off, being like, "Sam and Tara are safe there in witness protection. Uh, there's been another threat on their lives. We think you're a target too. We're getting you out of town." And then we follow Kirby and Chad and Mindy for the first third of the film. You know, as they try to escape, and you could have almost like a road trip screen you know you're getting them out of new york you're getting them somewhere uh and then along the way you can meet up with gail you can meet up mm. with with nev and kincaid and they those actors would only have to be in it for a scene or two because maybe you know they're like where are we going to go after a safe house gets jeopardized and she's like i know a place and the place is kincaid and sydney's house and sydney's like i'll oh, I know what these kids are going through. I'll protect them for a couple of nights. And they have a few nights at Sydney and <laughs> surely she's just like, fuck off and leave me alone. <laughs> yeah, I look at, uh, yeah. <laughs> but that's a way you could get, you know, you could get Nev Campbell in for a couple of days. You you get Sydney in the movie, but you don't have to pay her the big, big bucks. You pay her a bit of bucks. Um, I'm sure that, you know, you could get 
Hayden Panettiere back, you know, for for the right price, but not for crazy money. And the audience still has three characters that they recognize from previous movies. You get your legacy characters of of Gale and Sydney back. You introduce new characters. I don't know, a, a partner, a, a some guy they meet, a mechanic that they meet in a small town who jumps in the car to escape Ghostface and you know becomes a love interest for someone i don't know but like there's there's plenty of opportunity if you're like road tripping a screen movie to explore new story territory that hasn't covered before and keep some of the characters in there kill some of the characters well, off i was gonna say does it really need to be in new york anymore if you you lose the i think we're done with sisters? new york i don't think we no should but be- i, th- I yeah. feel like that was where they were still going they were going to sort of stay in new york it just might be different seasonally it might have been a different May maybe change up, but they're still. Honestly, film, I think they struggled think. to have enough ideas to fill one movie in New York. You know, like yeah. The, oh, I think disagree with that. The but set pieces I, were yeah. wearing thin. I think they realized halfway through the movie, oh, it's just buildings. Mm. We've got a train. We'll do something on a train, and then the rest <laughs> of it is. Junk. And even then, they butchered that really. I think, but hey, that was this whole. I mean, unless story. unless you're going to do the climax of seven on the actual. Statue of Liberty. Don't do seven in New York. You're you, you're done with that town. Yeah. But you, if you're doing again, if you do a road trip movie, you start in New York. You can have yeah. a sequence, you know, of, of Kirby and Chad and Mindy escaping down an alleyway and through apartments or whatever from a ghost face before you you make it just in the nick of time into an unmarked SUV and Kirby drives them away and you know the opening could be Chad and Mindy running away from someone who's chasing them. They don't realize until they get caught. That it's Kirby who's like, "What the fuck are you doing? Running away from me!" And then a ghost face bursts out. You know, this... mm. I'm writing this movie for Spyglass. All right, yeah. so I'm glad we're, I'm glad we've got this recorded. So when the movie comes right out, into this the DM. yeah. I mean, this happened. This happened with Scream Six. I wrote that the the finale was going to be in a cinema, and lo and behold, what did they fucking do? They put it in a cinema. So yeah, but your somebody's... ending was a lot better. Yeah, look, you know, I mm. uh, I don't want to pat myself on the back too hard, but yeah, it was. <laughs> <laughs> So what it's, but what do you, I mean, this is all me just spying on bullshit. What do you think, Michelle? What are we going to see? What do you think right now is the most likely thing that we're going to see when Scream 7 comes out? Oh, God, I don't even know. I saw rumours of Seattle today that, like, Sydney and Mark live in Seattle because have you seen all those pictures where it's, like, Scream in the snow is, like, the vibe for Scream 7? I mean, that 7. would be cool. I'd take that. Snow Scream mm. would be great. There's lots of fun setups and, and set pieces you can do with, like, heavy snow and I know Seattle has got, you know, the city and you've got the, uh, you could have a cool scene in the the Space Needle. Yeah. And someone's having dinner in the Space Needle and there's a ghost face in there and you just, you know, see the revolving exterior of uh, blood on a window. Yeah. Kill someone uh, on the needle. But they also Drop have like, they have more regional sort of country parts of, of uh, Washington. Yeah. You can mm. get them out into the snow in a log cabin. Fucking let's do it. I love yeah. that. Ooh, I love cabin that in the woods. Ooh. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. If they bring back Sydney for this one, that she needs to die. No, no, I think she can never die. I think that's. I think we learned our lesson in Halloween, that if you kill, um, Laurie Strode, you fuck the movie real hard, and you have to yeah. retcon real hard, and that's why they've had to reset that movie, that that series three <laughs> times, because and that's the only reason they reset the movie is because they fucking kill Laurie Strode, and they're like, oh, we made a huge mistake, mm. and they reset, and they go this time. We're not going to do it. And then they kill her and they're like, shit. All right, this time. And that's why this time with the final trilogy, everyone was like, I bet you they're going to kill her. I was like, I bet you they fucking don't. And they did it because they're like, no, this time we know. Don't kill her. So I, I, I think it is it is just about an unwritten rule at this point that you don't kill Sydney Prescott. Oh, well, She's kind I, of earned it. Even though she doesn't have an actual contract at this point, I'm pretty sure it's within... When she signs on, she's not to be killed. I think that's just the standard for her anyway. I think um, also she has young children now. Like it's pretty hard to kill your lead heroine from five. I mean, I'll still say six movies because her presence was there in six. Um, to bring her back for a seventh and then kill her when her children in the film are still very young. I think the audience would just be like, fuck this movie. <laughs> like <laughs> now we're sad because Sydney's dead and we're sad because we've seen those little kids and be like, oh my God. <laughs> Yeah, 100%. Really, you, really brutal. Do you think, is there anything to read into the fact that Radio Silence actually didn't come back to direct a third? Now, I know they moved on to another project. They're doing a monster film. But it, it was very early on they kind of decided to opt out. And I thought that was interesting. And I wonder if that was maybe backlash or feedback they got after six 
or maybe there was issues with Paramount Spyglass or the buy, the guy that pays the money. I'm not too sure because I find it interesting. They were like, yeah, we're out. And it's like, well, you just set up this whole story. And that's where I sort of think maybe there's the whole, you know, Jenna maybe going or going, Melissa being fired. Maybe that was all, all already potentially on the cards because they're like, yeah, we're going to bring in a new director. We're going to go in a new direction. We don't like where this movie was going or this franchise. We weren't really super happy with the results of Six, um, even though it made a lot of money. I wonder if there's that. And then obviously Chris Landon, who's come on board as a director, all excited, big screen fan, um, very well known for uh, Happy Death Day and, and and its sequel. So he knows how to do sort of uh, a horror slash comedy film. Yeah, those movies are fantastic. I was really so, glad. Yeah, I think he's definitely got, I think he's got the right chops for it. But it is funny that, yeah, we, I think you touched on it earlier that he came out and it's like, oh, it's not my fault because he obviously got hit hard with all the fans getting upset that Melissa was fired and he's like, it wasn't my decision. It's not up to me. Um, but then a few people were kind of, well, he probably could have said it wasn't me, but I, I support Melissa or I'm, I'm sad that Melissa's gone and blah, blah, blah. I could have maybe, but again, that's each to their own. Um, but there was talks that he was kind of like, oh, no, this is a sinking ship. I don't want a part of it. And then... Then a couple of days later, it was like, oh, no, no, he's definitely going to be directing Seven. But I kind of feel like if things don't go a certain way, and again, when if they can't write something good and Neb doesn't want to come back, he's probably one of those guys like, nah, creative differences, I'm going to just opt out. Because if you kind of sign on to a franchise when you think you've got, especially Jenna and Melissa involved and possibly Courtney and then Neb and then almost none of them involved, that's a big, that's a big <laughs> big leap like it's yeah. it's and he's in a really different position to radio science and radio science came on to do screen five everyone was kind of wary they're like what the fuck like a screen movie without wes craven what are you doing we're a bit nervous about this and they're like no 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 like and that's why the marketing was so much like david iket is back corny cox is back nev campbell is back it's called scream it's in woodsboro like we're we know, and people are like, okay, well, at the very least, we're going to see those characters we love in Woodsboro again. But their challenge was, I guess, kind of proving that the franchise can return because, you know, Scream 4 quite famously did not make a lot of money uh, despite being fucking awesome. Uh, it didn't make a lot of money and it kind of ended with, it ended the, the franchise with people being like, huh, okay, like, it's good, but Wes Craven is died now. That didn't make a lot of money. I guess that's done. And we were also pre like, you know, rebooting everything a million times and, and refranchising and, and Scream also had the TV series and they're like, okay, I guess that's what it is now. So Radio Silence were really with the challenge of like, can we restart this engine and get fans on board? And they did. And then they doubled down and they really got fans on board with six. Um, like what What the new director has to do is kind of step into a race already under underway and just kind of grab the steering wheel and hope he doesn't crash. And that's a lot more pressure because people are thinking, like you, you keep talking about, you know, four, five, uh, sorry, five, six, and seven as a trilogy, despite the fact that they are five, six, and seven of an ongoing series. Mm. But that is kind of how the public views it. And so if you've got a guy stepping in to finish, a trilogy mm. people are like well what the fuck where's the guys that we know what's happening here they're already way more suspect you you are bound a lot more by other people's vision uh the guys who wrote the last two are doing this one the everyone who's involved is very much set about i guess um continuing on the way it was and really he could just be a, a gun for hire and that might be a good challenge and it might be a lot of fun or it also might be an absolute nightmare where you've got spy guys telling you how to direct every shot because they've got a budget to stick to and you've got the writers telling you no this is how you do it and you've got the actors are like well you weren't here for the last two yeah. we know what we're doing I, so so what do you think do you think we're gonna see this director stay on board michelle do you think he's gonna stick around and, and try and weather the storm or do you think he's out you would hope that he does like i don't know he signed on to it so I, I mean, know. but so did Jack <laughs> I know, that's true. And and uh and Melissa Barrera to some extent. I think and I think this is what I was gonna say before, and it's it's a little bit ranty, but stick with me, because I think this is something that a lot of the media that I've read has really overlooked about what General Tager in particular is doing. 
And that is that Jenna Ortega and Melissa Brera and uh, the new director, they've all signed on to a, a specific film. They've signed on to an, an idea of a film. And for the director, that's it's going to be a big deal for him. Like this is stepping up from a, a small Blumhouse film that did really well and got a sequel to an established basically legendary franchise like you are taking on board one of the big horror franchises and if it fails you're going to get blamed because five and six six didn't fail so if seven fails the first person who gets thrown under the bus is the director regardless of what the circumstances were i also think general ortega like the fact is she's an actor and she's become identifiable as the character that she plays like she she's a child actor she was in a disney show called stuck in the middle and I certainly know, like my daughter is a fan of it. She's nine. And when she sees Jenna Ortega in Wednesday, which is a show she also loves, her first thought is not, hey, there's Jenna Ortega or hey, there's Wednesday. She goes, there's the girl from Stuck in the Middle. So she becomes identified with the character. Now she's Wednesday. She's being identified with the character. Now for her, she works on these projects for a couple of months, you know, maybe a year for the series. And then she goes and gets on with her life. For the audience, that's who she is now. So she's not just doing a job when she gets paid for these gigs. She's selling her image forever you know we still watch scream and we still watch scream 2 and any other show that we want forever because everything's on streaming and blu-ray down forever nev campbell is always sydney prescott that's why she asked for money because she's like this is my legacy this is how the world knows me i walk down mm. the street and people go hey nev campbell i really like your cooking or hey i heard about what a great <laughs> mum you are or hey i was really happy about the money that you raised for those orphans they go hey you're sydney prescott or mm. you're the chick from party of five maybe they might be like, I fucking love wild things. But basically yeah. she mm. is Sydney Prescott. And that's now mm. General Ortega. She is Wednesday Adams. And if she keeps making these screen movies, she's fucking Tara Carpenter. That's who she is to the world. And if the project she's signed on to is piece by piece being taken away, it's kind of like it's the the old story of like the axe. Like, hey, this is I've had this axe for 40 years. I've only had to change the head five times and the handle four times, but it's still the same axe. Like that's what she's doing with Scream 7. She signed on to a movie. Radio Silence are gone. Melissa Barrera is gone. The script is up in the air. The film that she signed on to doesn't exist anymore. So that's why probably more than anything she's left at this point is because she's like, this is not the movie that I agreed to make, even though it's still Scream 7 and I'm still playing Tara. And I think that's probably the boat that the director's in right now. He's like, well, hang on. My leads are gone. My script is non-existent. My start date is out. You know, and directors work on movies a lot longer than actors like he's got to do pre-production then post-production then all of the other bits and pieces that are fucking around with making a movie he could spend two years of this of his life on this film and get a year into it and realize this movie is not the fucking movie i started out making and it happens all the time yeah so i think what is also going at this point with melissa going it's yeah it's obviously a problem for the the film and the story because you've lost a, a major character but what's happening on a larger scale is the project that everyone is attached to no longer exists. And as fans, to us, it's Scream 7. We have no idea what the action movie is going to be. So it's just Scream 7. And that hasn't changed. We are going to go see Scream 7. But the people who are making it, Scream 7 doesn't exist in the way that they mm. agree to make it anymore. So when you hear reports, whatever the reports that come out over the coming weeks are, and I'm sure there'll be more and more that come out now, I'm sure that people eventually are going to start getting Jasmine Savoy Brown and, and Mason Gooding to talk. And I'm sure that they are currently in a lot of talks with their management and with their agents and with the studio and with the production team working out like, Hey, is this movie happening? Are we a bigger deal in this movie now? If we're a bigger deal, you got to pay us bigger bucks or we're not going to be in this movie. Like there's a lot of stuff happening, but eventually yeah. they're going to talk. And when they talk, if they turn around and go, yeah, we're out. It's not going to be as simple as well, Melissa Barrera got fired or general Ortega left. It's going to be like, yeah, man, the boat that we got on, when we started sailing has replaced every part of itself in the middle of this voyage. And it's not the same fucking boat, but mm. we're still stuck on it. So we're bailing before it gets to port because this isn't what we want. And I, yeah. I really think that that's probably a large part of what's going on with general Ortega in particular. And I, I suspect probably the director and, uh, and anyone else who at this point is in a really difficult position because if the director leaves now, the first thing everyone's going to say is like, Oh yeah, you left because general Melissa left. It's so much bigger than that. What's happening to yeah. this this movie at this point is so much bigger than just one or two actors either being fired or or leaving the franchise. And I I guess the, the point that I'm trying to make in saying this is I hope that the fans, which is I guess us and people listening to this episode, don't turn into a pack of dicks and go after anyone who might now exit the project. Oh, but they already reason. have. 
because it's it's mm. really it's like they're not thinking about this logically because General Ortega is an actor who is going to live her entire life being General Ortega and who's now going to live her entire life having a certain section of a rabid fan and going why didn't you come back for seven like no matter what seven is that's going to be part of her legacy now when people see her they're going to be like why don't you come back to seven the same way that Nev Campbell now has people like why don't you come back to six and the same mm. way that people are going to be attacking you know, radio silence. Why did you kill Dewey? And the same reason people went after Wes Craven, like, why did you kill Randy? Like the fans will always get rabid and weird. And I think it's, it's pretty cooked that people are, and I saw some of it. I haven't seen heaps. You might've seen more than me guys, but I've seen some of like people already turning on general tag and being like, I, like I saw one thing that was like, I love the scream franchise. And I thought the new characters are great, but now I hope this scream seven crashes and burns. And I hope that Wednesday gets canceled and the general tag never works again. It's like, come the fuck down dudes. Yeah, exactly. right, let's just take it easy. Like these people have good reasons by and large for not sticking with these movies. And it's big. It's definitely bigger than money. I think as well, it's not just pay me more. Yeah. But also I do- pay her yeah. more. Yeah. Like, Jesus, she's getting money in your pocket. This movie makes money because yeah. people like General Ortega. So give us more fucking cash. Anyway, that's that's what frustrates me about this situation more End than anything. Rant. End of rant. <laughs> so? Oh, no, I have nothing to say. <laughs> you have nothing to say. <laughs> Agree or disagree? Oh, agree. But I have seen so many people say, oh, boycott Scream 7. Like, yes. that is helping mm. anything. Yeah, and like I said, I'm not really online in the way that that you guys are, and like I don't, I don't know where. But you know, thing. are you seeing this kind of vitriol? Yeah, already? I think mm. because people are upset that Melissa's been fired, so it's kind of like I believe that was there a petition that got started. Yeah, I did that see way? that. Yeah. There's a huge like thirteen thousand signatures yeah. saying like "fuck you" for firing her. Yeah, that's that's basically censorship. I think is what the, the um, yeah. is. You yeah, can read and, the, the petition online. It's, yeah, it's so there's obviously that, and then obviously like. Uh, Michelle said that there's been this whole boycott scream. Like it's almost like it's not anything anti scream. It's more fuck Spyglass and fuck Paramount or whatever. And apparently, again, I think Paramount have distanced themselves too, even though they're the main. I guess. I mean, up until you said Paramount, I forgot that they were the studio behind this because they have done such a good job of not getting in front of this at all. Yeah, but Spyglass are the I guess production house or the the label that are the ones that put out the money, and then Paramount's the bigger bigger party that obviously releases the film and all that sort of stuff. So there's definitely been an anti uh, spyglass thing on. I mean, let's be honest, I'm still going to be the opening night, but I do I do feel like these kind of boycott things can really hurt a film um, and the bottom line. I mean, and it's happening in the Star Wars universe. I think it's starting to happen with Marvel where people are a bit over it and like, oh, we're not going to take – Disney's bullshit anymore and it's like no you know what we will buy, boycott these films and and then all of a sudden 200 million dollar films making like barely making its money back I don't know I think maybe they that's that's what I was thinking the hard reset even though it's not necessarily my favorite thing to do I was kind of like maybe it's like you know what we're gonna bring the band back together we're gonna have Dewey back we're gonna have everyone and go let's really write this one. I personally and the other thing is I would get rid of the two writers that were being involved in these last two films. They're not good writers. I'm sorry, but Angus you can write a better script than them and that's not that's not even I don't know if that's a, a slur you. on them or on no. me. Yeah. No, it's a, no, it's a slur. It's a slur. Yeah. No, no, it's a slur on it's a slur on them because they're the professionals and that's their job. Yeah. What you wrote for that <laughs> final scene in the cinema for your fictionalized uh scream six was a lot better one than they goes and i just think um you know maybe they had some good ideas but we, i think you said it in the scream six uh podcast like it just it's very <laughs> barely ha- holds there very well it's like a wet piece of paper it's very very weak and some of their um ideas once you watch the movie a couple of times and really think about it are so weak uh so ridiculously lame and just really not thought out well uh, especially in screen five like even the fact that they're at Stu's house but no one seems to know it's at Stu's house um the fact that they have to go to Ventolin in the middle of nowhere just like just stuff I was like just that's such lame storytelling and very weak um like I, I did a screen more writers course back in the day and it's like that's just I know you have to try and get characters from point A to B and make it make sense, but a lot of what happens in Scream 
five and six, it's really weak. Um, the story and even the storytelling with six, and I know we didn't really discuss it in our podcast, and it's only because you know I've watched it a few times since. Like even the stuff that's supposed to be a surprise to us is it's a surprise to the characters, but it doesn't make sense within the movie. Like it's like they haven't really thought it out. Um, yeah, anyway, it's just um, just get rid of those guys. Get rid of those guys and just start afresh. Well, you, can that's, that's a... you can continue on, like you can continue on from six, but start, get a fresh set of ideas because they aren't that good. I'm sorry. And they, they, they can come they can come, come at me if they want. I don't care. Yeah, they're totally watching. Well, I, I would be. Well, I'll, I'll post see. this bit and then I'll just tag them in it on yeah. Twitter. I'm fine because they're, they're ter- terrible writers. And what they did, to, like I said, to Gail, it was just lame. Like I think they wrote her really well for five and the whole Dewey's thing. Oh, look, I mean, I, I will never yeah. forgive him for killing Dewey, but you know, you can only hold a grudge so long uh, mm. before it just becomes uh, the grudge. Yeah. But I would, I, I mean, uh, you could get Scott Lob- Lobdell, Lo- Lobdell, I don't know how to say it, who wrote Happy Death Day. You know, if yeah. you're going to keep the same, same director in, um, in Christopher Landon, get him. Like they obviously work really well together, and they have this good simpatico of of keeping it nice and and streamlined and and fun and he's obviously got a good sense of humor because i think the first happy death day in particular is pretty friggin' funny yeah um what do you think then what's if if we're pitching i I guess we're pitching scenarios what do we think uh would you prefer a hard reset like and when you say a hard reset cable like you suggesting we we just kind of do a halloween and ignore a certain amount of films and go back to four and forget five and six exist. Yeah, I would go back. We, yeah, we like I go would back to one and forget. Go back to Ian, forget. I'd go back to Wes Craven stuff counts, and then um, on, onwards from there. I, I think five, you can find five and six. You can just erase because right, it, so- and you know the funny crazy thing in a metal world, it kind of makes sense because the joke is stab eight had nothing to do with the original storylines of the other movies and it's like that would well, be pretty funny we you know it's like meta meta it's like i, I think you sometimes you've just got to go you know cut your loss and go you know what we went down a certain path it didn't work and or we stuffed it up by again not treating our actors with respect by paying them or whatever or having some sort of deals in place we're you know dug a hole that we can't get out of let's just go you know what we didn't really want to do it but let's do a reset because people love David Arquette. He'll come back. Like, oh, look, if, if they, I mean, I, I, well, let, let, well, let's like, so what do you, if we're going to with pitch ideas, do you think uh, a hard reset back to four or yeah. continue yeah. the, the current We're going to have Jill Roberts. Jill Roberts has to exist. <laughs> we can't erase her from okay, existence. Okay, she, she could still exist and just be <laughs> dead. So we're going to have. Well, uh, no, but even, then, but even then, the original plan was not to have her dead. I would even, you could probably go far as back as like, she's not even dead. She gets shot in the head, doesn't she? Yeah, well, they, no, they change. Well, we could, we could wreck on that because, no, originally she, she wasn't. She doesn't get like, shot in the head. She gets shot and then she gets the oh, clear she gets electrocuted in the head. In the head. Yeah. yeah, she could be fine. She could be in a coma and wake up. That'd yeah. be fine. If people think Stu's still alive, Jill can be alive. Look, I'm telling you, we never see Randy's dead body. And if you don't see a dead body in a horror film, that person is a lot. I'm pretty sure um, we see him dead though, we? No, we don't. We see Gail's reaction. We see the blood and then we see Gail's reaction to him being dead. Yeah, two seconds later he could have cut. No, you no, dead. you're <laughs> forgetting it. We see him. We see him. Blood all over oh, his we face. See, we see a little, bit of, a little bit of cherry syrup on his chin. That's fine. <laughs> okay. He's fine. He's what blood. are you talking about? He just okay. He's fine. He so, but would, yeah. What's your pick then? Are we going to, uh, if you had to choice, the choice now between a hard reset back to four, five and six don't exist or continue the current timeline, but we clean slate seven. We get rid of everyone involved except maybe Mason Gooding and Jasmine Savoy Brown. The writers, the director, everyone's gone. We go back to absolute square one now that they know they don't have mm. Sam and Tara and then see what they can do from there. What What do you think is the better move right now? That's a hard question. <laughs> I mean, we're here well, to I mean, ask the hard what, questions. Basically, what it boils down to then, Michelle, do you want to, from a timeline point of view, mm-hmm. do you want to see Scream delete five and six from the timeline and continue from four? Or do you want to see it continue from six, but just completely jettison whatever is going on right now? I feel like it hurts my brain when they delete these movies, but like we did it for Halloween. So you could easily do it for Scream. I think maybe continue. And Halloween's done it a few times. Yeah, Halloween's but... done it a few times, but with like pretty lengthy gaps in the middle. And yeah. also like with 
I guess they went off in completely different storylines without Laurie Strode and then brought it back to Laurie. Mm-hmm. This mo- the, the screen movies have only, like, I don't even think they've gone away from Sydney. They've just barely tiptoed off her story for 10 seconds. And then they would be essentially coming back to, to Sydney and ignoring. I mean, look, I, I think you could have both. I think you could essentially jettison whatever Scream 7, 6 is going on, get Gail. I mean, you probably couldn't get Dewey back without some pretty creative gymnastic writing, but you get Gail and Sydney back and just ignore five and six from a character point of view. Like I said, like we took it to New York, we got away from Sydney. So let's go back to Sydney and leave New York. You don't have to do much in the way of explaining to justify that because she is already the main character. Yeah. And the movie franchise has already moved away to a different strange place. And only for one movie. It's not like we did four movies in New York and now suddenly we're not New York. Mm. We were there for one movie with no Sydney. Okay. Yep. Now we're back to Sydney in Seattle or wherever she is. Story continues. And like I like we talked about this offline in, in messages, but just be like, you know, you have a scene where someone's like, whatever happened to those Carpenter girls? And Sydney just goes, who? And no one ever brings it up again. And you just keep going. <laughs> like that's... Yeah, that's it's, it's as easy as that from from an in world point of view. Like, yeah, Hara and Sam and Sydney have fucking nothing to do with each other. Mm-hmm. Even in Scream Five, they yeah. have fucking nothing to do with each other. Yeah. So keeping Sydney and not Sam and Tara is so fucking easy from a story yeah. point of view. And I think oh, we could have both worlds. Oh yeah, absolutely. I think you could have what we, I guess I'll term it as a soft reset where. We kind of we don't ignore what's happened in five and six, but we don't we don't move forward with any of those characters. We go back to our legacy characters. Or alternatively, I think which would be a better I still think I just like I don't like any of the new characters that much. Oh, uh, give that, me Chad. Keep Chad. I just I just have no, questions but, I want yeah. answered. Like who was the mother? Like that's gonna bug me. I mean yeah, obviously that was gonna exactly. be a point at some point in, mm-hmm. in in seven that the mum would mm. but if someone up. from spyglass just answers that question and they get rid of the movies whatever go back <laughs> is to four it, is that yeah. what you want for scream yeah. seven it's not an actual film it's just a document just released answers. by spyglass yeah. that yeah. dot points like but the, other thing, the other the other thing that you can do if you reset to four you can possibly have jewel roberts still be, being alive you can have judy hicks is still alive yeah. dewey's still alive nev's still around I think, I think what this all boils down to is you just find a way to get Jill Roberts back into the series because you love yeah, Jill Roberts. Too. I think well, I think you would retcon anything. I think you would be happy for them to keep remaking. No, if, if you ask as long as she's still in it. If you no, in all seriousness, if you asked me before six, would you ever retcon Scream? I would say not a chance. But I, I do feel like, like even the core four, like yeah, cool, awesome, cool little thing that they have this moment, but. The f- like too many people survived. The- there was no stakes in six. I mean, that was all, a fight. all Everyone just fucking lived. It was ridiculous. But well, yeah, it's like only well, pretty much the killers died, and the two killers at the start, Samara Weaving's character, and a couple other nondescript characters die, and then everyone survives. Kirby survives. A uh, Gale survives. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, Mindy and Chad survives. Chad should never have survived five, but they liked him so you, Chad, much they brought him back. Bro. You're so dead. <laughs> Yeah, 100%. And then obviously the Carpenter sisters survive and you go, well, then, like, what's the point of screen? Like, you can't have, they said it was going to be more brutal. Yeah, it was brutal, but people lived. So you go, well, how is that even possible? Like, it's, yeah. not, it's not even remotely re- realistic. So for me, that's like, that's where they stuffed up to. Like, I kind of feel like if there was a couple more people died and you go, wow, that's brutal. Like, so we lost so many characters. Like we did in Scream 2. And it's like, no, no, we're going to, we're going to save the core four because that's what's important now. And it's like, well, that's not real. Well, half the core four is gone. 50% is gone for this next movie. And I don't know. It's like, well, maybe that's where you look at a reset or just, again, maybe a soft reset. You don't worry about the characters. You just move on and try and get Sydney and Mark involved and then and Gail and maybe Kirby and just go from there and not reference the Carpenter sisters and... I mean, makes twins or I don't know. The more I think about it, the more I, I, I've sold myself my own pitch where I think like Kirby rescues Chad and Mindy, gets man New York. You, you explain a lot of the problems of not having two actors and also moving your film out of the new setting. 
mm. in a pretty quick amount of time. If you have an FBI agent who's already a part of the story come in and be like, we've got them in witness protection. They're fine. That almost also immediately creates tension between Chad and Mindy and Kirby because they're like, are Sam and Tara in witness protection? Or is this chick who we thought was a bit crazy last time we hung out with her <laughs> full crazy and has killed them and is now going to kill us? Mm -hmm. So you have this uneasy alliance there, which can create some fun moments. You road trip in a screen movie, which they haven't done before. Lots, it gives you the opportunity for lots of different settings. Lots of different crazy shit can happen. Mm. Everywhere they go, they've got to be on edge because they don't know anyone or anywhere because they're in a strange place. Mm. And then eventually you go to the quote unquote safe house, which is Mark and Sydney. And then you can have a really fun sequence where they get to the their house and almost immediately a ghost face bursts in. And then Kincaid and Sydney just shoot the everlasting fuck out of them. Just like... 50 bullets into this ghost face before the ghost face has a chance to get through the doorway. And you're like, oh shit. And then they take the mask off and they've killed and caught one immediately. And then of course there's multiple killers, but you're like, oh, that's how we're going to roll in this movie is in Kate and Sydney aren't fucking around. They're just going to murder anyone who looks like a ghost face. You're like, great. This is a different movie. We haven't seen this. And then, yeah, fuck it. If finish the movie, have a big sequence in a, a big log cabin in the snow or, go full shining have like a big fucking abandoned hotel in the snow but it's a ghost face and it's you know there's lots of really cool stuff mm. you could do with that no it doesn't you know fix some of the problems but it does easily explain you know and you could also do the brilliant thing that they love to do in movies these days like at the end of the in film, space oh no okay. i mean fuck i'd love yeah at the end of the film they realize that the <laughs> the abandoned hotel that they're in in the snow is actually covering a secret billionaire's <laughs> missile site and they launch into space but fuck ghostface got on no like at the end of the film you know chad and and mindy still aren't convinced that kirby is on the level and then they you know get a phone call or a text from sam and it's like yeah we're safe you know and you don't have to hear Jenna Ortega's voice. You just have to see mm. the phone ring and the name Sam. Obviously, it'd be Sam. Uh, no, it'd be Tara, not Sam, because the movies are going to forget Sam exists because they're angry at her. But Tara, and then one of them answers, and they're like, oh my God. And they talk, and like, yeah, we're safe too. And they hang up, and they're like, oh. it, she was telling the truth. Tara and Sam are okay. They're, they're safe. And everyone's like, good. All right. And she's like, where are they? And it's like, they wouldn't tell us, but we will see them again one day. And it's like, no, we won't, but okay, <laughs> cool. And then everyone's happy. You know, those characters are explained why they're not there. The characters that we know are back together. You have some cool fucking set pieces in the snow and in the road and all kinds of crazy shit. You give Kirby a bigger part, which mm -hmm. everyone wants, I think. Mm -hmm. You get to see her do more crazy shit. You get to see her be really unhinged. And fuck it, maybe she is the killer in the third act. Who mm -hmm. gives a shit? Like, that would also be fun as well. Countless do, options. Do we think, though, as we start to wind up, does... Spyglass go real ballsy and actually recast Melissa Burr. I was wondering about that. What do you think, Michelle? Do you think it's a possibility or a good idea? I would hope they wouldn't. I don't like when Why? They do stuff like that. It's like when you get used to a character and the next thing you have to like, I don't know, just write a different part. Like just kill her off screen if you have to, but don't try and replace yeah. it with someone else. See, I'm inclined to agree with you, but then I think back and one of my favorite mm like franchises one of my favorite parts of my favorite franchises is the tommy jarvis trilogy in mm. friday the 13th yeah and tommy jarvis is played by a different actor in every Very fucking right. movie mm. um yeah. and maybe i have the benefit of not watching those movies in real time and every time a movie i'm like who the fuck is this guy oh he's yeah. meant to be because they cast wildly different looking dudes yeah. in every movie to play tommy jarvis <laughs> i mean the guy in five does not fucking look no. anything like the dude in six but you know it, now that it you know, history is, has shown that those movies are pretty fun. When I sit down to watch Friday the 13th, I'm like, yeah, I want to watch the Tommy Jarvis trilogy. And I don't really care that much that it's a different actor. And I'm like you, Michelle, often I'm like, oh, fuck, I hate recasting. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, when they recast. Elizabeth uh, Shue uh, in um, Back to the Future. Yes. When they recast Elizabeth Shue in Back to the Future. When they recast, uh, what's her face in, uh, in the Terminator series. Um, Claire Danes. Oh yes, with uh, Bryce Dallas Howard. Yeah, which I didn't even realize was the same. Yep. As we talked about in the Tarantino, oh, the, the Terminator one, I didn't realize it was the same actor. Uh, when they well, same character, you mean? Yeah, same character. They did this with another series that I love, and it's gone right in my head. But it, it is something that shits me. But I think yeah, also like I, I kind of think like I, I 
I'm with Michelle. I don't like recasting because I think it can be a bit jarring. But if they can get an actress's definitely a very similar look and they keep it as close to Melissa, I think it's all because I, I again I think with Jenna, like I think Jenna's so good in the first two screen movies that she's in, it's a bit of a loss her not being involved. But again, essentially, even though they have this bond, they're the sisters. The, the central character is Sam and having that bloodline with Billy Loomis. So they've written this whole sort of storyline that to sort of throw that away, you kind of go, well, then you kind of feel like you do have to go back to Nevin and, and Gail. And that's a huge reliance on those guys coming back. And if they're not, you go, well, where's this franchise going? How are we going to link it to anything? Like what, what, what is the motivations of the next killer? Why, why have we got a new ghost face? Well, who is he after? What, what's the connection? So, if you don't have that, I just feel like they, again, they wrote this really cool backstory to show that she has this awkward situation where she is a bit nuts too, maybe, and she's got this baggage of being the daughter of Billy Loomis. And, you know, she gets a bit knife happy at times and, and she obviously sees things or she's speaking to his ghost stories. She's hallucinating, whatever the fuck she's doing. But... I kind of feel like maybe that's where you do kind of go, yeah, we kind of have to recast instead of just writing her out completely. Because going back to something Michelle touched on, I think the mother being in the movie is really a cool idea and to have her backstory and what's happening there. Because they kind of set that up in Scream 6 too. Because I feel like that was almost like they dropped that in there where they had that conversation, Gail and Sam, and you kind of think, well, that's something that's going to come out in 7. And that's a potential killer and or another subplot that is interesting. But again, they can't do that if they totally write Melissa or Sam Carpenter out either. So I don't know. There's so many options they've got. It's just picking the right one, I guess. And all right, I got it. I figured yeah. it out. I can solve all their problems for them. Real simple. All right, here's what you do. You start Scream 7 with, quote unquote, Sam Carpenter, played by a different actor, obviously, uh, coming home from the hospital, they've just had a nose job, so they've got like big bandage across their face, <laughs> right? They're from behind, <laughs> you can't quite see it. And when she comes home, sitting on the couch is Tara Carpenter. You just see the back of her head, you don't see her face. She's watching a movie and she's like, How's the hospital? And she's like, It's okay, I'm a bit sore, I'm just gonna have a shower. She goes into the bathroom, she looks in the mirror, reflecting the mirror is ghost dad Billy Loomis. He's sitting there. He's looking at her. She's like, oh, God, not now. I must be really high on pills. And then ghost dad Billy Loomis comes out of the mirror. He's an actual goose. Then he possesses her body. And for the rest of the movie, oh, comes back. when the audience sees Sam, they see Ski Ulrich. I would uh, see that movie. And then when occasionally you have a cutaway shot when someone else is seeing, we see, you know, a double from a distance and you can't quite make out their face, but we see him. And then immediately when ghost dad, Billy takes over the body of Sam and has control, he picks up a knife and he goes in the lounge room and he just fucking murders Tara on the couch before we get a chance to see her face. And then the killer in Scream 7 is ghost dad, Billy Loomis. But the rest of the characters don't know that. Yeah, we lose the mystery element because an audience were like, we know who Ghostface is. But also you can have another Ghostface in there. And he's like, hang on, I'm fucking Ghostface. He's trying to figure out who the other Ghostface is while he's also going around fucking murdering people after he's possessed the body of his daughter. And then at the end of the movie, obviously, you know, he's got to die. And so you kill Billy Loomis again, but he's a ghost. You can't really kill him, so he can come back. But you kill Sam. And they go to space. Out. So Ghostface becomes an actual ghost who possesses the body of Sam Carpenter, who becomes the killer, which is what they kept alluding to in the last two movies anyway. You get your prophecy fulfilled. You get Skeet or Rich actually fucking playing a person instead of a ghost just in a mirror. And he gets to kill some people again. It comes full circle back to number one because Billy Loomis is the actual fucking killer again. But also the killer can be the person trying to solve the mystery because there's another ghost face out there because of course there's another ghost face. So it's not two ghost faces working together. It's two ghost faces working against each other. Oh, fuck. We haven't seen that. That's Scream 7. You're welcome, Spyglass Media. I just solved all all of your fucking problems for you. Done. No, That's the done. Movie. Uh, well, I guess we're done. Yeah, we've, yeah, we've solved. It. We've solved the riddle. Fixed it. <laughs> yeah. Though you could argue there was slight pushback in the six because there was kind of ghost face against ghost face. Oh, that was because yeah. they got angry about imposters. Now this time you full on how, and they don't know who they are. Like Billy has no idea who the other ghost face is. And the other ghost face is like, it can't be fucking Tara Carpenter who's killing people. She's the survivor. Not realizing that Tara Carpenter is fucking Billy Loomis now. 
Sam Kappen. Oh, Sam Kappen. Oh, I can't wait to see that movie. It's so good. <laughs> I've made the best screen movie ever. It's great. He's everything, making everything fan films. Fans or writing fan fiction. <laughs> screen screen movies love coming full circle. They keep talking about it. it all comes back. It all every screen movie always comes back to screen one. Mm-hmm. Every single screen movie comes back to screen one every single fucking time. So eight might as well conclude with the killer from screen one being a killer. Maybe you know what? Here it is. Here's the final twist. So in the final ghost face fight against each other billy's back in the ghost face costume he finally gets it back on again he's got the knife the other ghost face is there they're fighting each other they're stabbing each other billy's not going down because even though the body he's in is getting stabbed he's a ghost he can't feel pain he's fine he's slashing he can't understand why the other guys are getting down they struggle they grab each other's mask they pull each other's mask at the same time <laughs> fucking ghost stew ghost stew has taken over the body of just some random fucko or even better ghost stew has taken over the body of randy it's randy and stew in one they have a big fucking fight oh my god this movie's incredible I- and then they and then they kiss. This movie, this oh, what? <laughs> and then they kiss. Everyone thinks they were gay from Scream. So. Uh, <laughs> that's just gay <laughs> fan, fan fiction. <laughs> yes, no, and then they kiss. Done. This is going to be the greatest <laughs> film ever. Yeah, the swing by Everclear. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh my god! And then the swing is the credit song. Oh mm. fuck! I'm so excited about this movie. I'm so. You know what? Melissa Barrera getting fired might turn out to be the best thing that ever happened to me. <laughs> now we're going to see the best version you can imagine of Scream 7. Imagine the shit hitting the fan with the fans that are already pissed off that Melissa was fired if they find out she gets recast. No, 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 no. Not recast. She's still <laughs> she's still there. It's just, yeah. it's Billy Loon. Like, who's going to, honestly, no, I know, what I know, Scream fan he, is going to uh, be mad if instead of Melissa Barrera, you're getting Billy Loomis played by Ski. No, I get, I get that in your fan fiction, but I'm just saying. <laughs> it, this isn't it, fan fiction. This is a real movie that's going to happen, Cable. Well, what are you talking about? Get on the line. Get on to Gary. Gary at Spyglass and start submitting your uh, script. Yeah. Oh, I will. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to write this after as soon as he gets off the podcast. For a hefty fee, by the way. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to get paid... Nev Campbell money. That's what I'm going to get. Nev Campbell money. One bajillion dollars. <laughs> That's it. I'm getting all of the cash. And 5% of the royalties, yeah? Oh, my God, yes. 5% of the box office. 100%. Of- anyway, any any final thoughts, Michelle, in closing? No. you got nothing. No, I think so. <laughs> Not even a, you think that uh, my... Script is the best idea for a script ever. Oh, well, yeah, but you already know that. <laughs> Get no. writing. Go write your script. Oh, no. What? Oh, can you hear me? I said yeah. to change mic because my battery is about to die. Yeah. Oh, well, we I can go. Either. Are you good? Yeah, everything should be. There you go. I can hear you now. There we go. Good. Yeah, so I think uh, we can all agree this is going to be the greatest film of all time, yes? Yeah. yeah. Or Hot Mess. No, no I, don't, I, don't, I don't see. If they follow my very... No, I, I, you know, well, in all seriousness, they they don't care about what you write and what... Even if it is a good script, they're probably not going to use it because it wasn't their idea and that's how Hollywood works. And I can also see this movie being a hot mess. I mean, look, that's, I feel sad for them because if they would yep. just follow the the easy one, two, three step of Angus Brown script writing, yeah. um, <laughs> every every problem that they've created for themselves would be solved. Mm. Well, I guess on that note, let's just say not all sequels suck. I mean, I don't know if we can say that this time. I don't know. <laughs> well, I don't know if we can say this time. <laughs> I, I set you up for the line. Come on. Who's going to say it? Q Billy Loomis playing Tara Kissing Carpenter Stu. as he stabs <laughs> Stu, played by Randy, and they play the swing by Everclear. Hey, <laughs> Seeker Suck fans. I got my show on there. I feel your films. I almost see Seeker Suck fans. Remake. A quick warning. Seeker Suck. 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 Seeker